She's like, but I love John. Mm -hmm. Thor. Stop. I gotta let the water clear a little bit before I can see what I got. Right? Now it's recording. Well, I'm Michelle Meek. Originally from Anaheim, California. And I used to love to swim and bike ride. And uh, I used to do a lot of art. And then I was also a secretary. So Meniere's disease, and I have bilateral Meniere's disease, which means it's in both of my ears. It's a pressure regulation problem in the inner ear. So you have your inner ear, and then it's got two parts to it. It's got like an inside, and then an outside, and then the outside portion is what everybody calls the cochlea, where you hear at. Well, the inside portion has like a fluid that's made in your body and it fills up. Well, in Meniere's disease, the pressure builds up and then it breaks the inside piece and the fluids mix together. They're not supposed to. And then it heals and then it starts all over again. Just before Thanksgiving in 2016, I woke up and I stood out of bed and it felt like somebody had shoved me in the back and I smashed into a wall and I was really dizzy and I couldn't stand up. And uh, my husband had to help me pick me up and put me back into bed and I was throwing up and I couldn't stop and I got really sick so he took me to the doctor. And uh, I was misdiagnosed and it took about a year for them to figure out what was wrong. It's affected everything in my life. I can't drive, I can't work, I can't do the hobbies that I used to enjoy. Um, to take a page out of what's happening right now, how everyone's in quarantine because of the COVID-19, that's what my life is like all the time. I can't go anywhere without precautions. I have to walk with canes, I have a service dog can't do any of the things that I used to enjoy, so I've had to find new things to do in my life, in the house where I'm safe, where I, if I fall, I have help nearby. Um, I fall a lot. I, I hurt myself a, a lot because the disease makes me very dizzy and off balance. And um, yeah, it's kind of a lot like quarantine, but forever. And it just gets worse as time goes on. Um, it's, it has no cure and no treatments, so I just have to live with it. I cope with a lot of help from my husband and from my service dog. Um, I use my, my canes. I follow my doctor's directions. Um, I'm on a special diet that's low in sodium, which helps. I, uh, I'm careful about where I go. I can't go to the grocery store anymore because busy places make me very, very sick. So I ordered a lot of stuff online and I have stuff delivered to the house. And um, I just uh, do the best I can. I, I make accommodations. I don't make plans because I will probably have to break them. Um, I do a lot of reading. I've always had animals growing up, and I love them, uh, especially dogs and cats. And uh, we got Shelby when she was just a little pup. She was abandoned. And at the time, I only had back problems. So I trained her to help pull me because I would have a hard time with stairs as I, I was in a car accident and I hurt my back. So she did that job for a while. We ended up retiring her because she got too old. And then I uh, got Anya, who was a Rottweiler, and while training her to be a uh, balanced dog for the back problems, that's when I first got sick with them in years. So we transitioned her training over to um, more of the balance assist as opposed to the pulling and that type of work. And she did really good at it, but unfortunately she passed away. And so I contacted a breeder. Um, 
actually I contacted several breeders. I wanted a big dog because I'm not a small person. Um, I wanted a big dog that was intelligent, uh, was calm, would be able to handle the weight of picking me up from the floor when I fall. So I found one in Iowa who was willing to work with me and uh, she bred two spe specific dogs together to create Minose. And they bred her just for me. And she's a big girl and she's very intelligent. We're not quite done with training. We're about 90% done. Um, but a lot of her tasks involve balancing me. So she stands next to me and leans against me to make sure that I don't wander into the road or off the sidewalk. Um, if I fall, she helps me stand back up. Uh, she also does some hearing tasks for me, like if there's a, a strange sound, she will bark at it and let me know that there's something that I should pay attention to. Because as my hearing's going, I'm having troubles with hearing behind me. And uh, she also does some balance work. She has a special harness that was made in Italy just for her. And uh, it has a handle on it. And I have the handle to help me know where I'm at. So I use my hands as my balance mechanism. So that's when, when I'm not using the canes, I have the dog, so she's basically my cane. So she does all that, but she does more, obviously, because she's an intelligent creature and she's been trained to do certain specific tasks for me. So that's pretty much how we ended up with her. Um, Pressure point. Good girl. Down. Good. <laughs> Good girl. Good point. Press. Press. Good. Press. She's still learning some other things, but she also carries um, my medicines for me because she's got a little backpack. And uh, I have a little treat in there for her and a toy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're uh, we're still working on the a lot of the public stuff because I've been very ill this past year, so it's been hard for me to get out in public with her. So we're still training on that. But that's how we got her. Okay, that's uh, all the questions I have for you, Mom. So. Did you want anything else with uh, about the dog? Um, we no. can do some more. One more. Yeah, I think uh, that's all the questions I have for, well, this interview, so. Okay, cool.